Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth. Welcome to Networking Field Day. We're here in Mountain View, California at the offices of VeloCloud. The presentation that you are about to watch features VeloCloud's products and solutions and a group of networking community delegates who are invited to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions in front of a recorded video. If you would like to learn more about this and other exciting topics, including how to become a delegate or a presenter at the event, please go to our website at techfieldday.com. If you'd like to watch more videos about this and other exciting technology topics, please see our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Hello everyone, I'm Varun Santosh. Uh, I work in the technical marketing team uh, here at VeloCloud. And what I'm about to show is an actual manifestation of this uh, overlay flow control concept that Parag just uh, spoke about. And we have the architecture up here that we'll be working with, very similar to the previous slide, where we have a silver site at the bottom. And uh, the silver site has uh, the edge deployed right next to the layer three switch on the LAN side. And there is an MPLS CE router, right? Uh, on the hub side, we have two hubs. Uh, uh, we have all the IP addressing up here, and the idea is to be able to manipulate routes uh, or traffic that goes to legacy sites, right? So the demonstration is all about how does route learning happen in the SD-WAN domain. Now, once the route, uh, routes get learned on the orchestrator, how do you then go and program uh, all your subnets, right? So how do you program this specific subnet to say, either use a hub and spoke where all the traffic goes through the hub, or a go direct mesh all the way to the legacy site. So the demonstration is all about how easy it is and how we can scale based on this centralized view of the entire SD-WAN domain. trying to get the uh, PowerPoint off. OK, so this is the demo system we are uh, working with and the, uh, and the network topology, right? So uh, initially, there is no OSPF turned on anywhere. And, uh, you, and all the traffic that hits the layer 3 switch from this uh, PC goes native MPLS, right? So all you've done at this point is you have the uh, VeloCloud edge at the branch. You've activated it. But it's not attracting any traffic into the SD-WAN domain. All the traffic initially goes through the MPLS CE router. So what I'm going to demonstrate is how you can enable OSPF, how easy it is to enable it across all the branches, how the route learning happens, and then the programmability aspects. So everything happens through profiles. Let me log back in. So as you can see, the orchestrator is a multi-tenant system. So you can see all the customers that are uh, managed by this orchestrator. And the enterprise that I'm interested in is Acme. So I'll go into the enterprise. And the enterprise has five, uh, two, uh, five different branches. So five spoke locations and two hub locations. And we'll concentrate on the silver site and see how you can reprogram silver sites. Right? So if I go to the configuration and profiles, so profiles are common pieces of configuration that apply to multiple sites. So if I go and edit the profile that I'm using here, so you would see right now all the dynamic routing in the system is turned off. So what I'm going to do is turn OSPF on. But before turning OSPF on, let's look at the overlay flow control table. So the overlay flow control table is a centralized view of the whole SD-WAN domain. It shows you all the networks that are dynamically uh, learned by all the VeloCloud devices. So right now, you would see it's only the directly connected uh, routes that show up. There is no OSPF learning happening yet, right? So if I go back to the profile, 
and turn on OSPF. So you have a few different options. You can specify the area ID. You can uh, choose to send default routes down or only send specific SD-WAN overlay routes. So I'm going to uh, advertise all SD-WAN overlay prefixes. And the minute I save these changes in the profile, what the orchestrator does is it pushes the configuration to all the edges that are using this specific profile. Right? So if I go to monitor and look at what's going on in the network, look at all the events that the orchestrator is receiving. So you would see I, go, I went in and edited this profile. Now if I refresh this table, you would see OSPF uh, messages being ex exchanged between all the layer 3 switches at those sites and the Velo Cloud device. Right? So you'll see the different OSPF states uh, uh, between those devices. And they go, get to a OSPF full status. So this is where the route exchange has happened between the VeloCloud Edge and the existing Layer 3 devices. Now, if I go back to my overlay flow control table, you would see a lot more information in here. right? So this is, these are all the routes that were learned from all these silver, gold, and, uh, and other sites where the VeloCloud Edge is, de uh, is deployed and is running OSPF. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I look at a specific subnet, the, this specific route, the 10.12.0.0 route, let me blow it up a little bit. So this route is being <coughs> learned from multiple destinations. So for example, here it's being learned by the silver site. And you can easily go in and see what are the OSPF uh, adjacencies that this site has formed. So if you go into adjacencies, you would see it's running OSPF with a single neighbor. Uh, similarly, if I look at a hub route, you would see the multiple OSPF neighbors that the hub is talking to and learning and exchanging routes with. So this, again, gives you a scalable view into the whole SD-WAN domain. It has all the routes in here, but you can easily go in and filter. <coughs> and so again, the idea was for the legacy site, I want to move from using a hub site to sending traffic directly over MPLS. So you can go in and look at just the legacy site. So as you can see, the OSPF is configured such that uh, all traffic to the legacy site is sent through the hubs. So if I switch back to the network diagram really quick, so what's happening here is uh, any traffic that comes in from the LAN side, it hits the layer 3 switch. Uh, the layer 3 switch has been programmed via OSPF to send all the traffic into the SD WAN domain through the edge. Now the edge has a couple of different routes it can take to send traffic to the legacy. So it has multiple SD-WAN overlays, uh, one across internet and one across MPLS all the way back to this hub. Right? So when you have hub at the top, what it says is my SD-WAN overlay should end at the hub and then the traffic can go <coughs> to the legacy site. The actual link that it picks is based on the link conditions at that time. So if we start sending packets down this path towards legacy, and we start seeing packet loss, jitter, or latency on that link, we can, in a sub-second fashion, start using the other overlay across MPLS and send that traffic to the hub. And then the hub can then U-turn uh, it back to a legacy system. Right? So if I jump to the PC that was connected at that site and run a ping test real quick. So it has connectivity. And now if I uh, trace route to that destination, you'll see a couple of different IP addresses here. right? So the first IP that you'll see is the 192.168.128.1 IP. So that's the, uh, that's the layer 3 switch. So all the traffic defaults to using the layer 3 switch. But the hop after the layer 3 switch is the 1012.1 IP, which is the VeloCloud Edge. Right? So right now, you have the hubs on, on top of the router in the overlay flow control table. So all the traffic hits the edge, and it goes over SD-WAN back to the hub and back to the MPLS domain. Right? So that's what is happening here. The traffic gets to the edge. It writes the SD-WAN overlay, and it, it goes to one of the hubs. Right? So 172.29.0.1, that's the uh, hub one, the edge at the hub one. And then it forwards traffic native MPLS to the legacy site. Right? So that's, that's what this trace route is showing. Now, the other aspect is the change. Right? So suppose the uh, 
enterprise wants to go from a hub and spoke model where all the traffic was being back backhauled. Now they want to send traffic using path number two, where traffic gets sent directly through the CE router. So again, I'll go back to the overlay flow control table and hit the edit button. But again, this edit button is only for that specific subnet, right? So you don't have to go to a hundred different sites and make this change. All you do, go is all you do is go to this central table and flip the MPLS router above both the hubs, right? So what this tells the edge is now instead of attracting traffic into the SD-WAN overlay, reprogram the layer three switch to send it directly over MPLS. So I hit update. And now if I go back to my monitor events and say look at the last 60 minutes. So I made this update for this specific subnet. Now if I refresh this, you will see the uh, uh, overlay flow control uh, uh, reconfiguring the WAN elements, right? So the control plane gets reprogrammed at all the sites automatically, even though I made change only at one subnet, right? So if I refresh this, the control plane converges uh, at all the different sites, and now they know how to send traffic to this uh, legacy subnet through the native MPLS domain. So we'll just give it a few seconds for this to converge. Go back to the overlay flow control table so the router is still on top. Okay, so we still have connectivity. And now if I run a trace route to that very same destination, what you would see is traffic again hits the 192.168.128.1, which was the layer three switch. But instead of attracting that traffic into the SD-WAN overlay, we've reprogrammed the layer three switch to send it directly to the CE router. So the 10.12.0.1 IP that you see, if I go back to my uh, network diagram, the switch has been reprogrammed to send the traffic directly over MPLS. So now the enterprise has gone from using a hub and spoke model where everything was being backhauled to a mesh model where they can send uh, MPLS traffic directly uh, through the CE router. Just out of curiosity, the, the events that you're seeing in the, I think it's the overlay, over, overlay flow yeah. window there, uh, where are the events at? Are, are those events from your appliance itself or? Or are yes. you seeing the events from the layer three switch in the browser? No, so these are all from our uh, devices. They're telling, hey, we've reprogrammed the, uh, the WAN uh, control plane uh, to make this route less, uh, less desirable than the other route, right? So all the messaging is from our devices, yeah. How impactful is this kind of change to the network? I mean, it's like if you were running a continuous ping, would you lose a couple of packets or? Yeah, so this, this again uh, goes back to the legacy routing protocol, right? Like the, uh, the OSPF timers and how you set up the network. So uh, from a configuration push perspective, this happens pretty instantaneously, where we send out the configuration down to the edge at that site. But uh, the OSPF reconver reconverges. So it's happens. just all based on your OSPF reconvergence? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to add to that point, so. Uh, the overlay flow control table, even though I've taken the example of OSPF, this works similarly for a service provider deployment where you might be running BGP instead of uh, OSPF, right? So uh, I do have another setup uh, where uh, instead of uh, OSPF at the hub site, now you're running BGP with the VeloCloud gateway from the service provider's PE router. And the overlay flow control table works exactly the same way uh, even in that uh, scenario, right? So. So this is a typical service provider deployment. Again, you have all the branches that connect into the service provider's core uh, through the gateways that are deployed in the POPs. And if you look at the overlay flow control table, the concept remains the same now. But the difference is instead of this legacy route being learned from our hubs in an over-the-top deployment, these routes are now learned from our gateways that are deployed in the service provider's POP. 
right? And it's BGP instead of OSPF, but the overall concept remains the same. You can go in and easily change the preferred exit points to either go native MPLS, backhaul, all the way to uh, the SP's core network, right? So you can look at the BGP adjacencies uh, at all these locations, and the overall concept remains the same. Uh, you can configure uh, all the BGP parameters on the VeloCloud gateway now instead of the hub. Uh, and uh, and the rest of the operation remains the same. You have the same programmability, even if this is deployed in a service provider network. 